Today on our hitch mounted pull behind camper, we'll be installing the Kurt adjustable width trailer hitch receiver. Part number 13703. Before we can secure the hitch to the trailer, we'll need to go ahead and slide the side brackets onto the receiver tube and mount it into place. It's a good idea to have an extra set of hands to help you put your hitch into position. To hold it in position, you can use jacks, clamps, or even blocks of wood so that it will hold it into place so it'll allow you to use the hitch as a template to pre-drill the attachment points. We're working with a box channel, so we'll be using all six attachment points on each side. There'll be four in the side of the frame and two in the bottom. To drill out your holes in the frame, we'll be using the step bit process. First, we'll use our final size bit to determine the center point, use smaller bits as a pilot bit as we gradually work our way up to our final size. There, as we've completed our first hole, we'll now go ahead and repeat the same process for the other five attachment points here on the passenger side, and then the complete process starts over, over on the driver's side. Now that we've used the hitch as a template, drilled out the four side frame holes, we'll need to go ahead and drill a hole into the frame so that we can install the hardware. For this hardware, we'll be drilling an inch and a half using our hole saw bit. We'll do this on the inside of the frame near the cross member or brace. Now we've got our hole saw set up, we'll go ahead and use it to make a mark and then we'll drill out the pilot hole. Now with the pilot hole drilled out, we'll go ahead and drill out the large hole with our hole saw bit. Now with that done, we can go ahead and start installing the hardware. We'll be using the hardware provided with our install kit, which will be a half inch carriage bolt, two blocks per bolt, and a half inch flange nut. We'll also be using the pull wire provided with our install kit to help us get the hardware into the frame. We'll take our pull wire, feed it through the attachment point and out the access hole. Then we'll go ahead and slide on a block and thread on our carriage bolt. Next, we'll feed both the block and carriage bolt into the frame separately and pull them into position. Once into position, we'll go ahead and slide on another block and secure it all with the half inch flange nut. Once we have them all in place, we'll go ahead and tighten them down. Next, we'll go ahead and drill out the two bottom attachment points for this application. Note these are not always used in all applications. However, we have the clearance, so we're gonna go ahead and use them. So just as we did our side frame attachment points, we'll go ahead and drill out the bottom two attachment points, add our hardware, and tighten it down. Next, we'll go ahead and repeat the same process on the driver's side. We'll need to go ahead and drill out the holes for the attachment points between the side bracket and the cross tube. Once again, we'll be using the step bit process, making the holes large enough, as per the instructions, to feed our hardware in through the attachment points. With my first hole drilled out, I can go ahead and take my block and bolt and feed it directly into position without the pull wire. This is near the end of the cross tube and brace. With the bolt in place, we'll go ahead and again add our block and secure it with the flange nut. Now we'll go ahead and drill out the second hole, which will be on the bottom side of our bracket going through the cross tube.
With the hole drilled out, we'll go ahead and feed our pull wire through the attachment point out the end of the tube. Slide on our block and thread on our carriage bolt. Now we'll go ahead and feed them into the tube and pull them into position. We'll add our block and again secure it with the flange nut. Now with all the hardware placed, we'll go ahead and tighten it down. Next, we'll go ahead and torque each fastener to specification as indicated in instructions. And with that done, we'll complete the install of our adjustable width trailer receiver hitch, part number 13703.